Gachapon, a vending machine type device created by Bandai in Japan filled with capsules containing a random figure. Players were guaranteed to receive one capsule per payment while never knowing exactly what was inside. The figures were often part of a set which would incentivize repeated attempts to collect them all, despite the random nature of the rewards. This kind of machine was very popular and soon spread to different areas of the world. And of course, as the world became more and more digital, a new variation of this practice was created, the Gacha Game. Over the past few years, Hoyoverse, a subsidiary of the Chinese game development company Mihoyo, has been a very prominent figure in the Gacha Game genre. They are well known for massive titles like Honkai Impact 3rd, released in 2016, Genshin Impact, released in 2020, Honkai Star Rail, released in 2023, and an upcoming game, Zenless Zone Zero, which was announced in May of 2022 with an expected release date of early July 2024. Genshin Impact introduced an entirely new audience to the gacha scene when it released because it was the first gacha game of its kind, focusing heavily on exploring a massive open world to discover puzzles to solve and new enemies to defeat. For many players, it was the Zelda-styled art design, impressive animations, and beautiful special effects that drew them in but it was the engaging gameplay and world design that kept them hooked. Despite only releasing a few years ago, it is on track to become one of the highest earning gacha games of all time. The current king of the gacha scene in terms of revenue is Monster Strike, however this was released over 11 years ago, and Genshin looks to be catching up fast. In the same month that Hoyoverse announced Zenless Zone Zero, Kuro Games, developer of another popular gacha game, Punishing Grey Raven, made an announcement as well. A game set in a bleak, post-apocalyptic future after a massive calamity known as the Lament had wiped out most of the world. A game by the name of Wuthering Waves. Set to release in May of 2024, it was going to be just ahead of Zenless Zone Zero. Was this timing a coincidence, or was Kuro Games trying to get ahead of the curve for 2024 and redirect the hype from Zenless Zone Zero towards their own game? People may think the success or failure of one video game would not affect the other. However, in many ways it actually does. If Wuthering Waves is massively successful and starts to draw players away from other games, it will devalue the accounts on those other games. And the way this works is actually quite interesting. To put this into a real world scenario, let's say for example you have a very nice sports car. It's a beautiful red Ferrari. Everyone thinks it's really cool and impressive and you are thrilled every time you see someone staring at it. But suddenly a new car gets put on the market. It's a Lamborghini. And now everyone thinks Lamborghinis are the cool new thing and they want to see what Lamborghinis have going on. This leaves you sitting there with your Ferrari, trying to show off to a group of people who are not interested in it anymore because it's not the new best thing. Now you could get a Lamborghini instead and get in on that new hype, but you have had your Ferrari for a really long time, and you have paid to have custom seats installed, and you have a limited edition stereo installed, and you even have a keychain that was only available to the first 1,000 buyers. You can't just let all of that go to waste, can you? This is what happens in the mind of a person playing gacha games, or any games for that matter. The characters that they bought, the accomplishments they earned, the flex value of their accounts are all tied to the popularity of the game. They can't afford to have the game fail because then no one will appreciate their stuff, effectively rendering their investments pointless and a waste of time and money. This is an example of the sunk cost fallacy, defined as the phenomenon whereby a person is reluctant to abandon a strategy or course of action because they have invested heavily in it, even when it is clear that abandonment would be more beneficial. A Genshin Whale does not want to give up their investments, even though it would make sense to do so. Being put in this situation can cause people to respond in different ways. One such way is aggression, lashing out at the people who are putting their investments at risk. In this case, those people are the Wuthering Waves players and Wuthering Waves itself. Fast forward a couple of years to May of 2024. Kuro Games has just opened pre-registrations for Wuthering Waves and offered some incentives for players to participate. With over 30 million pre-registrations, the milestone rewards were achieved very quickly. This amount of interest had completely destroyed Genshin Impact's pre-registration numbers which clocked in at only 10 million. The release of Wuthering Waves on the popular live streaming platform Twitch was massive, 
With almost 150,000 peak viewers as well as a marketing campaign running to incentivize subscriptions from viewers and keep people streaming the game. As two gifted subscriptions, which pays out approximately 5 US dollars to streamers, would offer in-game rewards for the gifter. Comparing the launch of Genshin Impact to the launch of Wuthering Waves is made difficult by the large time gap between the two, as well as global issues that were occurring in late 2020. However, if we take a look at Twitch Tracker and compare platform statistics, we can see that in terms of popularity, Twitch itself as a live streaming service has remained quite stable. So, if we exclude any other outside influences, it could be said that the two games were very competitive with each other and had both instantly caught the attention of a sizable audience on launch. Some Genshin Impact players seem to have taken the aggression route in response to the rising popularity of Wuthering Waves and started to feel a little threatened, turning to Reddit and Twitter to let everyone know that they think Genshin is the superior game. One Wuthering Waves hater with the handle Ancient Weeb seemed to really despise the game, however their account has since been deleted so it's difficult to know if they were genuine or just adding some fuel to the fire. Even over on Hoyoverse's own website, Hoyolab, discussions were being had regarding Wuthering Waves. However, it remained a much more civil discussion on Hoyolab because unlike Twitter and Reddit, it seems to be a much more moderated website. Some players expressed concern that the release of Wuthering Waves and even Honkai Star Rail was shedding some light on the flaws that Genshin Impact had. Flaws that even some Hoyoverse employees had noticed, with even the head of marketing and survey deciding to try out Wuthering Waves during a live stream on China's live streaming site Bilibili. Following this were a series of posts that took a more neutral or even supportive stance in some cases towards Wuthering Waves, as well as some people who just wanted to stir up the pot a little and clap back at the Genshin fans. Here we see our old friend Ancient Weeb stating that both Hoyoverse and Kuro Games are using bots to boost their pre-registration numbers because it's a Chinese thing. The post reads, I have said a million times Zenless Zone Zero is botting. Same for Genshin and Star Rail. It's a Chinese thing. They hard bought socials and are able to get away with it easily because of the laws and restrictions over western companies they have there. This guy is just a delusional freak and wants to deny Wuthering Waves has botted about 20 million of those pre-registrations. Must be legit though, 27 million people pre-register for a game because they are so excited they want to take the time creating an account before it's even out, but then they release a character trailer on YouTube and it gets 50k views. Anyway, no point further pushing, too obvious. If these people are so mentally ill to think that all these Chinese games are not insanely bodded and fake numbers, I don't know. Honkai Impact 3rd Part 2 had nearly 10 million pre-registered, but it has less than 5k active players. Like if that is not the most obvious sign of botting, then get mental help. The character trailer mentioned in the post is Ling Yang, seen here with almost 1 million views a significantly higher number than the 50k cited by Ancient Weeb. However, fact checking is usually not something a Twitter freak concerns themselves with. As expected with anything popular, it will attract haters and people who want to bring it down a peg or two. So it wasn't a shock when bots began appearing in Twitch streamers chats. However, it was a little bit strange when people started noticing that the bots followed a very similar pattern. They would praise Genshin Impact for something while admonishing Wuthering Waves for the corresponding equivalent, such as comparing a boss from Genshin Impact to a boss from Wuthering Waves, or comparing the difficulty of certain challenges and puzzles. Some of the biggest and most well-known creators in the gacha gaming space, including Braxaphone and Tectone, posted about these bots on Twitter providing screenshots of the unusual first-time chatter messages. Many people speculated that it was Hoyoverse themselves behind these bots, however I could not find any decent evidence to support the claims. So for now it remains unknown where these bots really came from. Was it an upset whale scared of losing their investment? Was it really Hoyoverse trying to stop people from streaming a game from their competitor? Or was it just someone trolling? While the sabotage theory around botting seemed impossible to prove, there is an interesting conversation documented between a Hoyoverse agent and a Chinese content creator. The creator had been granted permission to enter the early access content creator server on Genshin Impact 
to allow him to make guide videos and other content. However, he had also been working with Kuro Games covering Wuthering Waves. Hoyoverse was not happy with this and informed the creator they would need to revoke his access if he planned to continue working with Kuro Games, because access to the server was a special privilege that not everyone gets. Signing off on the conversation by saying, quote, I hope we can keep this conversation between ourselves and not stream or make video to talk about it, and just let it pass, you're free to cover any content you want, end quote. However, we know from the conversation that the implication is that if the creator wants to cover content from other companies' IPs, they risk losing current and future deals with Hoyoverse. While this is an understandable position for Hoyoverse to take on the matter, as it is one creator working with two directly competing companies, it's still very unfortunate that people would be expected to strictly cover games from one company. This could result in content not being authentic, but rather being made in a way that guarantees future collaborations. Ultimately though, it is Hoyoverse's decision who they offer these deals to, and so the power is in their hands. At the time of recording this, we are one month post Wuthering Waves launch, and the battle has settled down. Wuthering Waves is sitting at an average of just under 13,000 viewers according to Twitch Tracker, while Genshin sits at just under 10,000. However, it's important to note that Genshin's numbers were dropping off before Wuthering Waves released, and so it's unfair to say that the decline is entirely due to Wuthering Waves. It could be that Genshin itself has a lull in content right now, or perhaps it's something completely unrelated to the two games at all. We also need to consider that Wuthering Waves, while being a month old now, is exactly that. It's only one month old. Genshin at this point is approaching the four year mark and is well past its early age of excitement, short of entirely new content being released. As it stands right now, Wuthering Waves seems to be dominating Genshin Impact in both popularity and revenue, topping the iOS market charts in Japan and generating massive revenue even after only one month on the market. At this stage we can't know for certain whether the trend will continue. It could be that players were just ravenous for another open world gacha game to play. But even when this spike in popularity starts to plateau, if the game is good, people will continue to play. It will be very interesting to see what the gacha landscape looks like in another month when Zenless Zone Zero is released. Will there be another uproar like this? Only time will tell. But the pre-registration numbers hitting over 40 million clearly shows that people are excited for the next big gacha game. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and thank you for watching. See you next time.